Act three, the cutting edge. Suddenly the music has gotten a little more sinister. And uh nobody's here, I don't think. I mean Wolf and uh Ryan O'Reilly were just there, but they magically disappeared because they're superheroes, I guess. He's a leprechaun. Yeah, say leprechaun, exactly. That's exactly what I meant to say. Um anyway, I I was planning on going back into the gift shop, but apparently you're supposed to do that before Dr. Carter gets murdered. But in between the time he gets murdered and the time when we first went to the gift shop and looked at the daggers, I was supposed to go back in here and examine the daggers again, and there would be one dagger missing, and all the remaining daggers would say made in Pittsburgh, so there you go. But uh, fortunately, that's not too much of a loss. So, come on, Laura. Her uh, legs are going so fast, but she's barely moving at all. Okay. So, let's see. First of all, I want to go over here again. Laura's kind of like that yellow uh, AOL logo. Even though he runs, he doesn't go very fast. Ha ha ha. Okay, here's Ryan O'Reilly. How are you? I don't have time for an idle chat, lass. Whatever. I want to ask him about uh, Dr. Pippin Carter. Someone who tired of the man's big ego would be my guest. Any idea who might have killed him? Anyone who ever met him. Did you talk to the man? He was so full of himself there wasn't space for anyone else to be in the room with him. How do you think he died? Gee, Laura, I don't know. He had a huge dagger sticking out of his chest. Maybe that was it. You discovered the body, you silly girl. He died because someone stuck a dagger in his chest, which tends to do that to a man. What happened to his body after you, after you examined it? The coroner was at the party. Maybe you met him. When he left, he took Dr. Carter's body with him, ego and all. Well, obviously we did not meet the coroner. Why on earth was he at the party? Um, but okay, so his body's gone, I guess. Because everybody's at the party. Even Ziggy. Yeah. Even Steve. Even, even yeah, Steve. well, he followed us here. He had a reason to be there, even though it wasn't a very... No, he was here because your touch makes me tingle all over, Ms. Bo. Anyway, wow. um... I already examined the armor in this room, but it's important to look back at this one again. At first it said the armor is empty, but now it says the faceplate on the armor is slightly open as if something is protruding from the inside of the dark helm. What could it be? Did someone hide some goodies in there for us? Oh, there's a body. It's Dr. Pippin Carter, famous dead archaeologist. Hey, I thought he said that the coroner took him away. What a liar. Wow. Seems like we've got a leprechaun in the museum. Yes, it seems so. Let's touch him. Dr. Carter's skin is cold and disgusting to the touch. He definitely gives the appearance of being dead. Yes, well. Dr. Carter's body has been indelicately crammed into the suit of armor. His filmy eyes gazed in mute shock. His head is bent at an unlikely angle, and the skin is puckered where the helmet's edges bite into the expanding flesh. Ew. That's gross. Okay, never mind. Um, okay, well, apparently they're not gonna dispose of bodies. That That's great. Uh, let's see. What is this? An authentic wood door from an authentic English castle. Although weakened by its extreme age, the door and its locking bolts seem sturdy enough to repel any invaders who might storm the Lion Decker Museum. Uh, I don't know when that'll happen, but... Ooh. Yay. Oh. While it was fun to lock the door, you think better of it at this time, since you might annoy the museum staff. No, I meant to open it. I don't know, I mean, if I were her, I'd totally lock myself in this room and never come out until everyone was safe to leave, but, you know, that's just me. Uh, can we close this one? Sweet. But apparently that doesn't annoy anyone, so... Okay. Well, let's move on to... Oh, hello! I'm not in the mood to indict an idle chit-chat, Miss Bro. Fine. How about... Dr. Pippin Carter? You dare to mention his name to me? He is a blasphemous temple destroyer and tomb robber who stole the deck of Amon-Ra from Egypt. Did you kill him? Miss Bo! I'm shocked that you would ask me such a thing. 
I'm on Rast and after Pippin Carter's life is punishment for his crime, and that's all I have to say on this matter. Hmm. I probably should not have asked him about that for reasons uh, I will explain later on. But oh well. Don't Sorry. mess with the fast. Uh, okay. So. Uh, what? That rhymes. Yes, it does. Good evening, Dr. Carrington. Good evening, Miss Bo. Good evening. Okay, what are your thoughts on Dr. Pippin Carter's death? Dr. Carter's demise was truly a loss to us all, despite his pushy, overinflated headline grabbing ego. At least he completed his work on the ancient Egypt exhibit before he passed on. Dedicated chap, I'd say that for him. Any idea who might have wanted to kill him? The man had enemies crawling out of the woodwork, Miss Bo. Practically everyone's a suspect, if you ask me. Everyone? Including you? Well, perhaps I should say everyone except myself, since I was at the fundraising event when Dr. Carter was taken from us. Terrible thing, really. Mm, okay. Uh, ooh, I saw some glinty thing over here, yeah. A typical light-hearted painting by anonymous Bosch or Bosch called A Heartwarming Story, depicting dead humans being tormented by skeletons and demons in hell. Oh. Well, that's... No, I wanted to look at the sparkle. He's Come such back. a great painter. Anonymous Actually. Bosch. Yeah, really. Oh, okay, come on. Can I touch it? The glint doesn't Beep. glint when you hold your finger on it. Cool. Uh, <laughs> How about we, uh... Come on. Glint for me again. Oh, okay. Uh... Take it now. Oh, it feels like a painting by Anonymous Bosch. Now that you've touched it, a little voice in the back of your hand, mind, not the back of your hand, but the back of your mind, reminds you that the oil from your finger could eventually destroy the old painting. Whoops. Good job, Laura. You've just destroyed a priceless, priceless artifact. Uh, well, maybe what? We'll, okay. Ooh, here we go. This skeleton key is inscribed with eerily articulate, articulated markings. The weird orthography of a long dead tongue. It offers no clue as to what it unlocks. Pandora's box, perhaps? Maybe. Can we take it? Jeepers! The, the shiny key on the painting even feels real. Probably because it is. Although you have a natural attraction to shiny objects, this one is firmly attached to the painting and obviously can't be removed by hand. Well, damn. Do we have anything to remove it? Uh, an onk, a bone. Uh, no. Not really. No. Okay. Uh, let's look at this. Uh, blah 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 blah. It's a happy-go-lucky skeleton skeletons tormenting a dead king named Graham. They appear to have stolen a key from the king, which one of them is placing on their treasure barrel. Poor King Graham, he didn't deserve that. And that looks nothing like him. Oh well. We'll have to worry about that later. Let's go over here. Ah! Hey, Countess! Oops, I just clicked through that, but it said you hear muffled voices coming from Yvette's office. Uh, we'll take care of that in a bit. I want to ask the Countess about Dr. Pippin Carter. He was rather a good-looking fellow, don't you think? Of course, I was at the party when he died, surrounded by witnesses. I've already told Mr. O'Reilly about that. Oh, okay. Well, let's see. Voice is coming from Yvette's office, but the door is locked. But you know, let's take um, a piece of advice from Yvette and listen at the doors with the water glass, like she said at the party. Thank you for coming to see me, Olympia. This is very nice of you. You are very welcome, my dear. What can I do for you? Oh, you see, I found this strange bone, and I said to myself. Yvette, if anyone could tell you what this is, it would be Olympia. A bone, you say? How fascinating. Where did you get it? Find it. I found it right here in the museum. Here it is, Doctor. Now let me see. Ha ha! Yvette, you silly girl. This is a chicken bone. It is? Yes, of course. Why, it is still greasy. You got this at dinner, didn't you? <laughs> oh, you have cut me, Olympia. 
I was playing the little joke on you. You are a funny girl, Yvette, but I am quite fond of you. Ooh. Olympia, we are the good friends, no? I have the problem I wish to talk to you about. Oh, certainly. What is it? Come closer so I can whisper it to you. It is very personal, and I want no one to overhear. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my! <laughs> Oops. And uh, that, that was the end of that, and I can't hear anything of interest where the pillar is. You clicked the mouse twice. What? You clicked the mouse twice, that's why you heard nothing of interest. Well, no, there was nothing of interest, but um, anyway, I'm out of time, so <laughs> I'd better get going. Sorry, folks. Bye-bye.